Primary and secondary affixes. We have talked about affixes in this course and also in, in introduction to ling linguistics when we were discussing morphology very briefly. Over the years, our knowledge of morphological structure has been enhanced by work in phonology. There is a lot of work in phonology, so as a result, we know more of morphology as well. So, by observing the phonological processes that takes place and do not take place within particular sets of morphologically complex words. So, they have told us that what takes place in morphologically complex words and what does not take place. So, one distinction that has come out of work, on, obviously on morphology, uh, phonology that pairs morphology and phonology is between primary and secondary affixes or known as class 1 and class 2 affixes. So, this is a new kind of uh, uh, affixes. Obviously, they are the same that you have uh, started before or you see them, you are familiar with them. But today, we will discuss in detail about their origin from which languages they have come. So, why do we call them uh, primary and secondary affixes? In English, this distinction is intimately connected with language history. It means that it has something to do with etymology of the word. As etymology of the word tells us that this word has come from French language, from Greek or from Latin or from any other language. Primary affixes in English are often Latin Romanes origin. So, primary affixes or the affixes uh, which we call primary have come from these languages and secondary for Germanic origin. From if you look at the uh, look at the language family Indo-European, you can find the languages which are uh, which fall in these two groups. So you can easily determine. We did study something, uh, something of it in uh, Introduction to Linguistics. Etymology can only take us so far in morphological analysis. It can help us little. It does not tell us much. But even then, it is very useful. The primary, the secondary discussion is a living process regardless of its history because we find it even today. This is very much used in English language and in English as in other languages. So, it is found in uh, many languages of these uh, families, language families. It cannot be explained away as etymolo etymological residue, something that has been left by, uh, by the result of etymology of the word. Some examples from Kiparovsky of words bearing I, A, and Ian, a primary suffix and once bearing ism, a secondary. So, second, ism has come from, uh, from Germanic languages and Ian is a suffix of the Latin Romanic, uh, Romanist languages. For example, if you look at these words, Mandel, so when we add it, Mandelism, what happened is the stress moves from uh, from the first syllable to the uh, to the syllable just preceding the suffix. So this suffix changed the stress. So Mongol, Mongolian, Parkinson, Parkinsonian, Shakespeare, Shakespearean, grammar, grammarian. So you see that how this there is a shift of stress from the first syllable or from the uh, from one syllable to the last syllable, right, Be last uh, stem before the affix, uh, suffix, right. Similarly, if this is, this is about uh, primary affix, now we look at the secondary affix, for example, Mandel, if we add ism with it, Mandelism, the stress is on the same man, right, not, there is no shift. So, in case of secondary affix, we do not have a shift in the stress of the word. So, Mongol, Mongolism, Parkinson, Parkinsonism, National, Nationalism, 
So you can see that stress remains uh, uh, re remain at the same syllable before the attachment of this secondary suffix. Primary suffix cause a stress shift as I just said, while secondary do not cause a stress shift. If primary and secondary affixes both occur in the same word, right? So first come the primary and then come the secondary. Right? The primary affix will occur closer to the stem than the secondary. So if we have a word like uh, we just uh, studied, uh, E-O-N, Mendelian. So Mendelianism will become, it will become Mendelianism. However, when we, we find that sometime uh, we have a suffix which is actually has two, uh, uh, is not one suffix but two suffix. Why one suffix belong to a primary uh, uh, suffix, uh, class suffix and other belong to secondary class suffix, right? So, traditional usage among morpholo morphologists is to use the symbols plus when they refer to primary syllable and hash, uh, hash to use secondary uh, syllable to mark a juncture, a point between the stem and the suffix. So, when we have plus between stem and the suffix, we understand that it the here the suffix is the primary affix, and if we find hash between stem and the suffix, we find that it is secondary suffix. So you can say same term stem primary suffix plus an able and secondary suffix. The stem is the same, right? Secondary suffix hash and able. So reparable capable of being repaired, liable to be paid back. However, there is a shift in meaning in this, eh? liable to be paid, paid back or recovered. When we have it with the secondary, it is repairable, right? Capable of being repaired and it has a shift in meaning semantically, a broken appliances. So, there is a change uh, in meaning as well. Semantically, there is a shift of meaning. Uh, with uh, primary uh, effects and the secondary effects. So, you can have preferable and preferable. When we have it with the uh, primary uh, effects, we have, we have a different stress and when we have it with the secondary effects, we have a different effects, uh, different st stress. So, you can see that even with the able with the certain base form, the it is different where, as compared to the secondary uh, effects. So you can say cultivable. So cultive will be the base, whereas with the secondary effects, cultivatable it is cultivatable, and the cultivate is the base in this. With secondary effects, cultivate is the base and with the primary effects, cultive is the base. And there is also a difference of meaning. With generally, with the uh, secondary effects, the verb tend to be transitive rather than intransitive. So, you can look at the examples. Similarly, like suffixes, we have uh, primary and secondary division in prefixes as well. For example, let's take in mean not as primary uh, prefix. Uh, it uh, in plus it always as uh, in plus uh, any word always have uh, an allomorph. It means that a change, a, a variation of the morpheme, right? So, secondary suffix un plus uh, hash is not and it does not have any allomorph. So, if you look at this irregulable, here na is change. It is, it is change with r, the, the following sound. So, it becomes, it becomes an allomorph of in. So, inviolable, imperceptible, indivisible. You can see that it has change 
with the sound of the coming syllable or coming morpheme. But here with the secondary syllable, we do not find any change. Un remains un. Unregulatable, unviolatable, unperceivable, undividable. So this is a very important difference of uh, uh, primary and secondary affixes, uh, prefixes and affixes. So we can conclude it that primary affixes often of Latin Romanus origin as secondary often of Germanic origin causes stress shift, do not cause a stress shift, secondary do not cause a stress shift, usually occur closer to the stem and usually occur outside of the primary affixes, secondary affixes always occur after the primary affix. The semantic of the derived form tend to be less compositional. Whereas the semantics of the derived form tend to be compositional, right? It can be, uh, it can be composed of different units. May attach to a non-basic allomorph, attach to stem's basic allomorph of the stem. The affix itself may have allomorph. The affix itself does not have any allomorphs. May attach to non-lexical stems. The primary may attach to non lexical stems whereas secondary attached to lexical stems like noun adjectives and adverb so this is the difference between different types of affixes and which can stand as suffixes and prefixes and which are secondary and primary affixes